The ancient wizard kings have escaped from their imprisonment, and their return has begun a war between mortals and gods that will shake the world. Can you bring your faction to victory and unite the realms to rule under your command? Nine years after the release of Age of Wonders III, it is finally time to delve into a new realm and conquer new lands with Age of Wonders IV, a 4X title mixed in with turn-based strategy and roleplay elements. The ancient wizard kings have waged a war that has begun the new Age of Wonders, and it is up to you to help destroy them and aid them in battle. As part of the campaign, you will often play as both the mortals and the corrupted Godir, taking different roles in the story and watching the war unfold as a whole. While at first the story realms seem like a tutorial, you will fight and protect your lands and unfold the story of war, and quickly it'll become a normal campaign as any other. Coming into Age of Wonders 4, I didn't really expect much of a story mode, but with the new event system that creates random occurrences, alongside the quests you get along the way, I was quite pleased with the story realms overall. Veterans of both the 4X genre and Age of Wonders might find it easy, and likely a bit simple, as many of the worlds are relatively small. You can't skip story realms, you unlock them chronologically. But being able to choose between easy, normal, and hard was a welcome addition for a newcomer like myself. Each time I start a new campaign in Age of Wonders 4, I have the choice of either picking from a selection of pre-made fantasy races, mystical elves, industrious dwarfs, colonialist humans, or creating my very own. Starting with bodies that range from human to toads and mole people, the physical shape of my citizens is just the starting canvas. Each body type includes a default body trait and mind trait, but I can swap these out if I want. Toad people typically have the body trait resilient and the mind trait water adaptation, but I can change these to suit an underground environment if I plan on having them live in caves by selecting underground adaptation instead. This will allow them to move faster on rocky cave tiles, and they'll be able to build farms on cavern floors. After this, I pick a culture. Each has its own magical affinities, economic structure, combat bonuses, and unique mechanics. Feudal cultures gain a special stand-together buff for adjacent combat units, while dark cultures have special city structures in which they can imprison enemy heroes to pump them for additional knowledge income. Culture is further refined by the selection of two society traits, which is where I really got to hone a specific playstyle for each campaign. I can choose to make my people the chosen uniters to focus on diplomacy and peace. Or I can get extremely nasty by making them ritual cannibals who become more powerful as I gain points in the evil alignment. Age of Wonders 4 has what I think may be the most powerful magic system I've encountered in a strategy game. As part of creating a custom race, I get to pick an initial tome of magic. This is Age of Wonders 4's answer to the traditional tech tree, and it's a big shift from the system found in Age of Wonders 3. Here, magic is divided into tomes, each with a particular magical affinity. Studying multiple tomes from one type of magic unlocks more advanced tomes, but I always have the option of branching out and studying new kinds of spells. That's important, because part of what makes Age of Wonders 4's magic so powerful is that it unlocks spells that can transform my entire faction. My dark cats began their first campaign with a slight tendency toward evil. Cat owners can confirm that this is highly realistic. However, I began studying nature magic tomes and eventually cast a spell that granted them animal kinship, allowing me to conjure wild animals to recruit into my armies and spells that boosted their stats in battle. This highlights one of the things that I think makes Age of Wonders 4 a truly special game. All that customization I've described is just the beginning. My people change and grow over the course of each game, sometimes transforming into something altogether different from what I started with by the time I reach the score screen. It feels completely organic. Each decision I make is reflected in the new choices I have across my kingdom, from city management to battle tactics. At any point, I could start studying from the Tome of Necromancy, which opens up an entirely new soul-harvesting mechanic for my people. Those choices and changes are reflected visually, too. As my evil cats become more attuned to nature, my units start weaving twigs and leaves into their costumes. Their eyes take on a permanent green glow when I grant them animal kinship. And at some point, their warrior king found a unicorn, which he's riding around a mystical archipelago somewhere in the multiverse. 
All of this might sound a bit overwhelming, and it probably would have been in less practiced hands than Triumph Studios. Actually, playing Age of Wonders 4 feels deceptively simple. Right-clicking is all I have to do to issue the majority of commands, and an unobtrusive list of alerts on the right side of my screen keep me up to date on all the available decisions I have during a turn. It helps that the game is utterly gorgeous from top to bottom, as I mentioned in my Age of Wonders 4 preview a couple months ago. The beauty of the fog of war that shrouds the mountains and forests at the edges of my explored territory extends to the menus and UI, which manage to be both thematic and easy to read. And I love the way diplomacy is handled. By giving a whispering stone to another civilization, I can open diplomatic channels with them. The menu for these talks is clean and intuitive. I can issue plain language pronouncements like a declaration of friendship, or I can settle grievances by declaring war or demanding payment for territorial incursions, all at the click of a clearly labeled button. It's a game that feels elegant to the touch. On top of all this, simply exploring the map and fighting things is just an old-fashioned good time. There are ancient wonders to explore, with powerful monsters to fight, and new artifacts and weapons to loot. Bands of renegades guard treasures scattered around the world, like in the glory days of Heroes of Might and Magic. Depending on the map, there can even be an entire underworld to explore beneath the surface, with its own people and cities to discover. World generation is terrific, and showers me with options like giant forests, enchanted island chains, zombie worlds, or dimensional rifts. My complaints about Age of Wonders 4 amount to nitpicking. I'd like it if it was possible to arrange my troops prior to battle, since these can get complex when I have several full stacks of units besieging an enemy city, for example. And while the options for creating my own faction are impressive enough, it's the kind of choice that just makes you want more, and more of the truly weird. Mole people are great, but why not penguins? Or ghosts, maybe? Give me merfolk or dragons or a race of gelatinous cubes to command. Deep as it already is, I can see the potential for more. That will more than likely be resolved by forthcoming DLC, so I'm not too worried. In the meantime, I have a new favorite 4X game to spend my weekends with. If you're a fan of the genre, new or old, Age of Wonders 4 is a game you owe it to yourself to play. Age of Wonders 4 is a delightful and well-rounded. Experience a story about fighting back against the ancient wizard kings that threaten to rule the world with an iron fist, or head out to new realms and enjoy the gameplay loop as you ascend your favorite factions to Magehaven. I have nothing but praise for most of the game. I cannot wait to play more, unlock new traits and origins, and try again. Considering there isn't much of a story, and what there is I don't want to spoil, I just want to say that I was pleased with the narrative overall. Although it isn't groundbreaking and won't be winning any awards in storytelling, it was a pleasant surprise that I enjoyed partaking in. I was particularly fond of clear objectives and a quest log that changed it up from the usual realms, which gave more of a reason to explore the story mode, even as a veteran. Once you've finished with the story realms or decided to skip them and go on to play standard matches, you will have two options to select from. A preset realm with different traits, or a randomly generated one with features you can choose. This essentially becomes the endlessly replayable aspect of Age of Wonders 4, as you will then embark on realm after realm conquering either the AI or others in online PvP. The character and faction customization is fantastic and in-depth in ways that I didn't really comprehend in my first match. Everything is customizable, and you can create pretty unique styles and builds to take into the battlefield. From choosing a mage-focused build to winning through expansion, there are viable options and unique factions to play with, and it is a big part of the game's charm. And all this is before counting the Pantheon system. Each time you complete a game, you are rated for the actions you took. From whether you won to how many people you killed and how much you leveled up, you will gain points that rank up to Pantheon levels. These can then be spent in your Pantheon progression which can unlock various things from cosmetics, new pre-made realms, depending on your level, traits, weapons, and even origins, offering new ways to play as you progress. I could go on about in-game mechanics and tell for several thousand words more, but for the sake of brevity, I'll leave it at this which I have told above. So subscribe to the channel, commend and like peace. Cheers, bye.